Joy Reid, whose shift begins, I guess, in a short 90 minutes from now. Uh, also joining us, Joy, you heard uh, Reverend Al say this is probably the best choice Joe Biden could have made. Do you concur? I, I absolutely concur. And one thing that Reverend Al left off is that when he was a young man, he was the New York youth organizer for a woman named Shirley Chisholm. And Kamala Harris, when she launched her presidential campaign that you referenced, Brian, a little earlier, she rooted her run in Shirley Chisholm, in the legacy of Shirley Chisholm. And I have to tell you that for Joe Biden to choose her, to choose to embrace that legacy at a time when African Americans are questioning whether or not our counterparts in other parts of this country will fully accept our citizenship, is the greatest affirmation to the power of black women, to the tenacity of black women, to the legacy of black women as carrying the Democratic Party uh, on our backs for generations. It's a legacy that Shirley Chisholm began in 1972. And for Joe Biden to make this choice and to make it after all the backbiting that we heard that, oh, my God, she challenged him on race. He showed himself to be a big man, a big enough man to say that I want the person that challenges me. I want the person that forces me to be better. I want the person that questions me on matters of race, because that's why she's there. I want the woman that people say is too ambitious, wants to be uh, too powerful, has a future. I want that, to embrace that. I'm proud of Joe Biden, I have to say, as a man of his generation, to be the anti-Trump today to be the anti-Trump and to affirm black women in this way, on this day, with the president that's in there now, this could not be a better selection. He's taken us back to the start. She was always the most logical choice. He did a lot of searching. He did a lot of research, and he came right back to where he really should have always been. I think this is a great day for this country. Joy, is there anyone whose reaction you're curious about or waiting to hear as uh, as we go on into the evening? Anyone who you're worried about embracing this choice? I'm not worried because I'll tell you, black women that I spoke with after the conclusion of the primary, there was a sense of non-buyer's remorse specifically about Kamala Harris. I can't tell you, Brian, how many black women said to me, you know what, looking back on it, I wish that I'd gotten information for her. You know what, looking at it, the fact that in the end, mainly black people said, you know what, let's choose this white guy, right, this older white guy, said, darn it, we missed an opportunity. And I think there's so many black women, her, you know, the sororities, the, you know, the organizations that all literally could have really gotten information for her. I heard a lot of non-buyers remorse. And so I think that black women in particular, that women in general are ready to get information for this woman. I, the, the reaction that I really do want to hear, though, and that I am really excited to hear is going to be Barack Obama and Michelle Obama, because they open that door in a way that can never be closed. And the fact that that door stayed open for Kamala Harris, who at one point Barack Obama said was the most impressive vice, uh, the most impressive attorney general in the country, she then becomes a senator. She's following his path. So I'm very excited to hear what the Obamas are going to say. Maybe particularly Michelle, because I, you know her podcast is all about becoming and about her, you know, her ability to embrace all aspects of what it meant to be the first um, black first lady and all of the challenges that she had dealing with that. So I'm excited to hear what they say. Look, we know Trump is going to say something, but I suspect that he's probably a little afraid of Kamala Harris. I don't think he'll know what to do about her. What name is he going to call her? Because any name you try, that's going to resonate with black people and Kanye West running third party won't fix it. There's nothing he can say about her. Anyone who wants to detract her based on anything is going to face a wall of black women like they've never seen. Biden just ensured that he will have maximum turnout from African Americans. He just ensured that today. So I'm not really worried about her. And I think women in general are ready. Women's organizations are all ready to mount up and defend her all the way to the finish line. And, Joy, let's talk about two more constituencies who are likely having a big time of it right now. The uh, community of Howard University bison scattered all over the country and the AKA sorority yes. sisters. 
Yeah, I think all the journalists who aren't sure what a ski wee is, get to know it because you're going to see a lot of her of the sororities. I think the whole Divine Nine. Look, if you're in a black fraternity or sorority, and remember, you know, the other, the one of the sister um, sororities, the Deltas, actually protested um, during the fight for suffrage because they were not allowed to march with the white women who were fighting for white women's suffrage. And so the, the sororities and the fraternities in this country go back 100 years. They go back a century to the early 20th century, the, the other bad old days in the first decades of the 20th century, when these fraternities and sororities were fighting for inclusion of black people in American public life and doing so in incredibly brave ways. So I expect the Divine Nine, every single black fraternity and sorority are very excited now, but yes, especially her own, the AKAs. And Howard University, listen, not only will she be the first black woman, but also the first AAPI woman. Let's not leave that out because, you know, she is also partly Asian American. And so she's the first Asian American woman vice presidential candidate, the first black woman vice presidential candidate, the first black vice presidential candidate, period, and the first Howard University alumni. And HBCU has sent a woman to the vice presidential ticket. That is big. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.